Hey guys, Ray Valencia here from Starstrung Productions. I recently picked up the Sony a7R III in 2021. And why am I excited about a camera from the fall of 2017? So let me be the first to tell you that you don't always have to go chasing the latest camera that comes out. Get the camera that suits your needs and what you're looking for, because now that all these brand new cameras are coming out, the later series cameras are only gonna go down in price. I actually picked up this a7R 3 for under $2,000 on New Year's Day versus the other Sony bodies that are coming out and there's a lot coming out right now including the Sony a7S 3 which I've used and it's incredible and I still may get one down the road also the Sony FX3, the FX6 and the Sony Alpha 1 I've been on shoots with all of these except for the FX3 which just got announced and they are all incredible cameras but I'm looking in the price range between 2000 and 2500 for my second camera. I narrowed down my choices between the a7R 3 versus the a7 III. And I really just got this camera for stills because I have an a7S II for video. But what I've come to find out is that this is actually a really good video camera as well. And as you can see, I have it all rigged out for video here because I've taken it on five paid shoots now and it's actually starting to take the place of my a7s II for video in most situations but prices are going to be dropping very soon because there are so many new camera bodies coming out and be looking out for sales because the prices are dropping on this i got this bundle on sale for 1993 dollars on new year's day from focus camera you can also get it on amazon i'll leave links to everything below if you're interested in picking this up for yourself and it also came with this free case wasabi battery charger a sony tough card it's one of those ones that you can leave underwater for up to three days and it's supposed to be semi indestructible so straight out of the box there are a couple differences and i don't know if you know this or not but the s series and r series cameras come with the battery charger the a7 III does not come with a battery charger this is the bcqz1 battery charger it is a hundred dollars if you buy it separately but i don't know about you guys but i haven't had super good luck with third party battery chargers like I said, this one came free with it. It's a dual charger. I haven't even tried this one out because I have the official Sony one. So leave me a comment below. Let me know if you've had any luck with third party batteries or third party chargers that work well. So straight out of the box, the Sony a7R 3 has an advantage over the a7 III. It's a hundred dollar charger. I'm gonna give this one to the Sony a7R 3 so if you're coming from an older camera like I am with the a7S II, the dual card slots is awesome having redundancy. And also there's a UHS II card slot on here as well, which is much faster. And I have been able to use that with the Sony Tough Card. It's the V90 card that came with the camera and it does buffer very fast, but definitely notice the biggest difference whenever you're like offloading the card to a computer. It's awesome having the dual card slots. So this is a draw because they have the same in the two cameras that I was considering, but it is an awesome thing to have. Another difference between the a7 III and the a7R III's body is that the a7R III is slightly better weather sealed and has more of the magnesium alloy on the body itself. All of the connections on the side are the same, except the R3 also has a flash sync port Another difference between the bodies is the a7R 3 has three memory recall slots on this mode dial and there's a button to change in between the different modes that unlocks the dial. On the a7 III, it only has two memory recall slots. The other spot is for just an auto like scene mode, which I would personally never use. I prefer the more metal construction, the better weather sealing, the three memory recall slots and the premium dial on the top. So overall, I would have to give the physical body of the camera to the a7 R3. So Sony calls it the a7R because it has a high resolution sensor, right? Well, not only that, but it also has a higher resolution LCD screen and a higher resolution EVF than the a7 III. The electronic viewfinder in the a7R 3 is actually 56% higher in resolution than the a7 III. It also has a refresh rate of both 60 and 120 Hertz. The a7 III only has it in 60 Hertz, 
It also has this really cool sunny mode where you can increase the brightness and this is awesome for shooting outdoors in bright daylight because this thing gets up to a thousand nits of brightness on this tiny little screen. So no surprise here, the higher resolution EVF and LCD screen go to the A7R 3 the a7 III uses the full frame for 4K mode, but it actually downscales a 6K image down to 4K, resulting in a sharper image, less noise, and less moray and aliasing. And when the a7 III uses the crop mode, instead of using the 6K portion of the sensor, it just uses the 4K portion of the sensor, which is still super sharp. 4K, it is what it is, clean video. The a7R 3 uses the full sensor in 4K, but it also skips pixels and lines to use the entire area of the sensor to come up with a 4K image of 3840 by 2160 from the 8K sensor that is inside this camera. Yes, the stills that come out of the a7R 3 are 8K. They're huge. So this means the 4K mode on the a7R 3 is slightly softer and it introduces a little bit more noise and aliasing as opposed to the a7 III. Although it does look very, very good if you're scaling down your 4K down to 1080. So the Super 35 APS-C mode in the a7R 3 is awesome because you can do 4K in APS-C mode. On my A7S II, it goes down to 1080p whenever I crop down into the APS-C mode. So that is one added feature here that's awesome as well. 4K in the Super 35 mode is actually sharper than the full readout because you're downscaling this 5K image at this point down to 4K instead of using the full 8K sensor. So the 4K Super 35 mode on this camera actually results in a sharper image, less noise, and less aliasing than the full frame mode. So when it comes to video, I give it to the a7 III. So with the huge bump in resolution also comes a decrease in light sensitivity on the a7R 3 and the a7R 3 has a base max ISO of 32,000 and the a7 III has a max base ISO of 51,200. The maximum boosted ISO on the a7R 3 is 102,400 and on the a7 III it is 204,800. So when it comes to low light, I give it to the a7 III. So one major difference is the a7 III came out about six months after the a7R 3 and featured a way better autofocus system than this camera. Now don't get me wrong, the autofocus in here is incredible. I love using the animal eye autofocus on my dog, as well as the subject detection and face and eye tracking and everything for stills. Both cameras have 425 contrast-based autofocus points. The real difference is in the phase detection autofocus points. The a7R 3 has 399 phase detection autofocus points, which covers 47% of the sensor. On the other hand, the a7 III came out six months later and covered 93% of the sensor with 693 phase detection autofocus points. So for autofocus, I would definitely give it to the a7 III. Although the autofocus on this camera is nothing to laugh at either, the eye autofocus works incredible. I recently used this at a Disney wedding and it was able to subject track my bride that was coming, not my bride, on a bride walking down the aisle and it kept her perfectly in focus with the lens wide open. And that is such an important shot that you just cannot miss. Okay, so let's let the camera out of the bag. I mean the cat out of the bag and let's talk about resolution. So there are a few differences in the sensors that could determine which way you go. Obviously with the 42.4 megapixel sensor, it has 75% more pixels than the a7 III, although that does come with a few caveats. The a7 III is better at low light and it also is sharper in video. The a7R 3 has 42 megapixel sensor, but it has no AA filter. There's no low pass filter on there, which makes for sharper images. Although without that filter, it makes it more susceptible to moray and aliasing on certain patterns. I'm coming from the a7S II, so I already know all about moray and avoiding certain patterns as it is. So this really didn't deter me at all from choosing this camera. 
Although the a7 III is better at low light than the a7R III, this is still nothing to laugh at in darker situations. Shooting with the a7S II alongside the a7R III was a world of difference at night. The a7S II was way cleaner. The a7 III is that middle ground where it's at 24 megapixels, so it's just the sweet spot in between the a7S II and the a7R III as far as resolution and low light capabilities. I already found great use for the 42 megapixel sensor because there was a case where I really needed to crop. I recently went to the Super Bowl boat parade in Tampa Bay for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers and the longest lens I could find was a friend's 70 to 200 Canon. So I used a Metabones adapter, but the farthest I could go was 200 millimeters. The great thing about the a7R3, the crop mode goes down to 18 megapixels. On the a7 III, when you crop down, you go down to 10 megapixels. So I don't find that super usable. That would be less resolution than my a7S II for stills in crop mode on the a7 III. So the a7R3, I didn't use the crop mode. I just shot in the full frame mode, 42 megapixels. But with that high resolution, I was able to punch way in and crop my shots in. And this is a perfect example whenever you don't have enough reach, but you need to crop in to get the shot. To me, the 42 megapixel full frame mode and the 18 megapixel crop mode meant more to me than the a7 III offered with 24 and 10 megapixels. So that's why I chose this sensor over the a7 III sensor. Obviously it shouldn't be much of a contest because the a7R stands for resolution, but I have to give the sensor to the a7R III. So this is the personal criteria that I went through to determine which camera to buy in 2021. Leave me a comment below, let me know which camera you'll be picking up. And if this helped you out, hit the like button, subscribe for more filmmaking videos just like this one shoot for the stars and I will see you very soon in the next video